Good evening, good afternoon, or wherever it is in anywhere in the world that you are right now. I'm sitting here so excited this afternoon to be joined by a football legend. Not only a football legend, but a global superstar when it comes to success in the game of football. Someone who's really pushed the boundaries and gone out there and achieved all kinds of great things in their life as a professional footballer. He doesn't even need an introduction, but I'll do him the justice of doing so. Mr. Dwight York, thanks for joining us on the show. Thank you. He's here on Make It Happen TV, guys. For those of you that don't know him, which will be just a very small few I can imagine, here's some highlights to show you a little bit about Dwight's success as a professional footballer for Man United and all over the world has been as a global super. So you can't believe it, I'm so excited about it. You wouldn't believe how good this is. Take a look. And now Dwight York's going to try and latch onto this. Oh, a mistake by Kenner, and he will latch onto it, and it's not the four. The combination between Cole and York was out of this world. Marvellous goal. Here's Weber, and now York. Oh! Okay, so for my audience in the United States, we call it football. I know you call it something else, you call it soccer, but this guy is a footballer and we're not going to talk about soccer at all. Okay, Dwight, thanks for coming to the show with us. We're here at Jamira Golf, no, not Jamira Golf, it's we're at Trump Golf Trump. Days, aren't we? And you're here in Dubai just for a few days. Yes, I am. Um, it's a part of the world I've become very familiar with, um, not just for the weather, but the, the people, the food, everything about Dubai is the place that is happening. And, it's a good stop off Gat if you if you travel in towards Asia as well so it's a, a middle ground between England uh, and Asia um, so I come here quite often and you like it here obviously you've got great food great hotels <laughs> great golf I mean you've probably played every golf course now I have I've been coming here a very long time I have to say even then I was playing I was still used to come to Dubai quite a bit and over the years I've met some interesting people and I've got some great friends here and and of course, golf is my new passion. So in the golf fraternity, I've met a lot of people. I've been very blessed to play all the golf courses as well. So um, they're pretty much of my, my second home at the moment. Cool. Now, Dwight told me just a few minutes ago that he's playing off of a one handicap. So he's almost off scratch, which means he's an awesome golfer. <laughs> Were you always good at sports, period, when you were young? I know that you were great at football, but did you pick up every kind of sport you tried and you were good at it? Yeah, pretty much. Yeah, really? Um, yeah, pretty much. Okay, uh, one of the kids at school I hated. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, probably. A lot of people do hate me for that, that particular reason. But yeah, I was um, brought up in a, a very large family. I had um, six brothers and, and, and three girls in the family, so a family of nine. Um, so I was very surrounded with sports people and back in the Caribbean, back in the days, back in Trinidad and Tobago, it, there wasn't no social media and internet. So you literally Thank have to God. get out. Yeah, <laughs> pretty, pretty much have to get out there and, and do some, some, some sports to kill the time. Um, certainly after school and my brothers and them was obviously sports mad and uh, being one of the youngest in the family, I've always been dragged along. And you know, running between, running between the roads and you know, kicking a football around, mm -hmm. playing cricket. Um, doing marathons, uh, swimming, jumping, everything that was there to be done. Uh, rest assured, I was participating in was, every aspect of when it. When you were doing that though, and you were good at it, was that because you were competing with your brothers a lot? There wasn't like, it, within the family, there was kind of like rivalry and competition to be best Well, they were stuff. much older than me, but at okay. the end of the day, you know, um, yeah, you still have to compete with them. And, and I think having them around certainly enabled me to, to, to really, um, get me to be better as a, and as a person, I suppose. Uh, there was more the leading, the leading role in the family and I just kind of tag along even though I was younger, but I was always playing catch up and still being able to catch him up eventually. But it took me some time and, and thank, thankfully to have my big brothers and them around me, they probably helped me achieve my goals in sports as well. Now, when I was a kid, we kind of had winter rugby okay and football and then we had cricket in the summer athletics before the summer and that they, they were kind of like our choices the kids that went to the posh schools played tennis okay but for and me golf. yeah golf and the fancy stuff but this is what we had and so when when you were growing up what were the sports that were available to you when you were at school well for first um we have two two um season we have the rainy season uh, and the dry season mm -hmm. the dry season we play cricket okay. uh, athletics of course um and, and pretty much that was it. And then in the, rain, in the rainy season, we play football. Um, that, that was basically 
the two sports that you pretty much indulge in. Um, back then as well, there wasn't, you know, sort of the equipment to play rugby and, you know, needed, you know, all these guys because rugby needs a lot of equipment. Football is just get a ball, even though if you didn't have a pair of shoes, you can kick the ball around. Uh, rugby, you couldn't do that because you need a pair of boots just to run around uh, to play rugby. Yeah. So that was different. So it was very easy to accumulate a lot of uh, guys to come and play football because they, it wasn't very expensive a family and it was very difficult back in those days as well. So rest assured that football was the way to go. Cricket, as I said, during the summer. Athletics among ourselves, sprinting in the roads and you mm -hmm. know chasing each other around the park um, was great fun. I, I love my, my time being back home and, and my, my time growing up back in the Caribbean was something that I will always remember, always love. And if I were to do it again, it's a place I would want to grow up. That's lovely, isn't it? Yeah. Now, when you think about sports as a kid, you, you chose football, obviously. Were there any other choices you could have made? Like, could you have become a professional cricket player? Could you have become a professional in, in, in another sport? Was it ever interesting enough to you? Mm. Or were you kind of like, football's your thing, and that was what it was? Yeah, I was torn in between in many respects because I was decent at most sports, and I've always made the... The, 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 the team, whatever team it was, even in athletics, badminton, rugby, uh, table tennis, I've always been able to be part of the team. Um, but uh, I suppose as you grow a little older within your school years, you sense that, you know, football, I was a little bit more talented than the rest, even though I could play all of them and I was never left out. I was always selected in every team that, every team sport that was available. Yeah. Um, but something in football that I just seems a little bit better. Um, it, it, it becomes more naturally to me. Everything that uh, went were football related was just happening very easy for me as yeah. well. Um, so uh, clearly football was the way to go. Do you, when you think about it, you know, you hear lots of people talk about, they kind of like, they visualize their future. They imagine what they're going to be or they, 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 they know, you know, without a shadow of a doubt what they're going to be, their career's going to be and they're totally focused on it. Did you, no. Was there a kind of like a deep drive to become a professional footballer? Because people would have watched you over the years and you just always seem to have this big smile on your face, <laughs> this happy-go-lucky kind of mentality where lots of people were a lot more serious, you know, in terms of their expression and, and how they delivered stuff. So with that kind of like happy-go-lucky mentality that you, you portray, whether that's in the year <laughs> or not, okay, was it, I'm going to be a footballer and I'll do whatever it takes? Or was you just one of these gifted kids that just, you, you could play football and, and someone saw you one day and went, this guy's got it? Maybe I was gifted to a certain degree. And, and I think often enough, when you come from the Caribbean, you think to have that kind of laid back persona, that kind yeah. of attitude that people think that, yeah, you know, easy go, come. You know, and I was a happy-go-lucky kind of guy anyway. And, and what is there not to be happy-go-lucky? You're living in the Caribbean, the sunshine, you know, you got the beaches, you got the palm trees, the coconut trees, your mangoes, <laughs> and all those wonderful surrounding around you growing up in the Caribbean. So it was a, a, a beautiful place to be, even though it, there wasn't a lot of material stuff back then. Mm -hmm. um, but I, as I said, I wouldn't change my upbringing. But yeah, you go back to the, the football side of things. I think that, you know, the one thing that you will find in the Caribbean particularly is the fact that there was a lot of talented people and, and talent is something that we associate ourselves with. And there were many before me and after me um, that it, they say they're talented, but somehow no one has gone on to utilize those talent. Um, so I wanted to be different. Mm -hmm. um, and being different means that I wasn't indulging in the bad stuff. Uh, I didn't get indulged in, you know, uh, probably the weed smoking, if that's the right Party word, or drugs basically. or that kind of stuff, which easily could have got into. I was pretty much focused on football and I wanted to be different. I wanted to be, you know, someone that maybe uh, changed the, the perception of the talent that we have in the Caribbean. but saying that it was never easy to get out of the Caribbean at the time. Um, the only option possibly back in those days really was to go to America on a scholarship. Right. Um, but yeah, I, I suppose by you know, the age of 14, 15, I got really focused on being a professional footballer. I didn't have any idea how that was going to happen, mm -hmm. but I was thinking that I was living the way of trying to be a professional. The little that I know of professionalism and professional football, Whatever that little I use or, I, or the knowledge I've gained over the time, I felt that this is the way I wanted to go. And, and I was very lucky that I had a very strong mentor in Burton Sinclair. 
uh, a father figure, my coach, um, telling me this is the way the professional football. And I believe everything that he done, he had said to me, um, in terms of you know the way you eat, the way you sleep, the way you don't indulge in drugs and alcohol and all that kind of stuff. So I, I take all that on board, um, knowing the fact that no one never really made it out to the Caribbean as a professional footballer. But whatever he did, he I believe in it, and I and I follow that path for a very long time, and I dedicated. I train, you know, every day, pretty much, you know, hours upon hours to really better myself as an individual. So. Uh, as time progressed, I was getting better and the recognition was coming with the, the, the work that I put in. So I was very lucky in that sense. And lucky enough, back then, um, Aston Villa came along in 88, 89. Um, and I was obviously still at school, but I was representing Trinidad and Tobago at senior level at the age of 15 slash 16. Uh, and that's when I really got spotted. And uh, I was very lucky then to be in at the right. You know, you need a bit of luck. Whatever mm. people say, sometimes you need a bit of luck. Certainly, um, being in the right place at the right time, and I was competing with guys, uh, you know, 26, 27, 30, and I was only 14, 15, 16. I'm wow. playing with these guys that was twice my age, so it just goes to show that. And would have been formed physically. Yeah, right? absolutely. So much more than you. Oh yeah, yeah, they were physically bigger and stronger than me, yeah. clearly. But I was, you know, because of my skills, and I can sort of you know, um, nip and tuck my way around these guys a little bit, uh, enable me. And of course, I was very confident back then as well, even at that very young age. And of course, once I start representing my country, I recognize I can compete with these big guys. Um, and I was lucky, as I said, that Graham Taylor gave me the opportunity to go to England. Right? And I also had a scholarship to go to America as well. Oh, uh, okay. So I had the scholarship to go to IFU, I think it was back then, and uh, Howard University, an option for me to go. But I wanted to go the professional way, so I opted to go to England rather than go to America. Now, when you think about kids that have dreams, that they, that, that let's say they want to be a professional footballer, there's a lot of kids, whatever it may be, that are, are kind of told by their parents that you need to have something to fall back on, or mm. you know that that's a dream that's very unlikely, <clears throat> considering the <clears throat> the environment you're in, or the skills that you've got, or whatever it is that that belief that the parent has, mm -hmm. you know, uh, and they sometimes hold the kids back. Yeah, I and kind of to almost talk them out I, of I it. I mean, I agree. Some, you know, parents. You had a coach. Yeah, very much so. And even my parents at the time, obviously my mom passed now, but my, my, my mom in particularly want you to go to school and get your qualification and get your, uh, <laughs> your, 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 your degree in school. Mm -hmm. um, I think all parents will want that because they say that's the, the way to go. Um, I didn't finish school. I up for professionalism and go to England and, uh, and earn money and, and make a living. But that doesn't always work for everyone. And I'm not sitting here saying that, oh, go do that. And yeah, I mean, parents always will take the safety option first and rather than risk it all. But, you know, how I see it back then, it was like, you know, I want to be a professional footballer. I'm going to focus on doing that. Schoolwork is something that you can always go back to. Yeah. You know, football, your years goes, you know, you get older and the time probably passes. Yeah. In school, in school, from a school perspective and academic wise, you can certainly go back to that even at the late stage. It's never too old, so to yeah. speak, to go back to school. So, but parents don't see that. They always think that you should fulfill your school years. And I, and I do agree to a certain degree, but I'm living proof to show that, you know, ne necessarily you have to go to school um, to be a, to be a success. Uh, I, the, the, the TV show is called Make It Happen for a reason because I believe that you can do anything you set your mind to. I believe that if you want something bad enough that you can have that. And people that get to the, 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 the kind of success that you have, to me, are physical, real life demonstrations of that mentality. The world is full of people that say, you can't or you shouldn't or they complain or they give up and all this kind of negative stuff that's fed around but for me it's like whatever you want to be if you want to be it bad enough if you're prepared to give up the partying when you're a late teenager yeah. and you're prepared to dedicate yourself to whatever it is that you actually can be whatever it is you want to be you're an example and there are other examples out there like that do you when you expose yourself to other professional footballers do you think they have the same dedication and they're all kind of are wired in the same way it's non-negotiable in their brain that they're going to be you know whether it's aston villa man united or trinidad and tobago is the mentality of 
being successful and there's no ifs, no buts, no maybes exist within that group of people? I, I think there is some element of doubt, I have to say. I mean, I agree with you 100%. If you want something badly enough and you, you, just, you want to really um, sacrifice all the things to make sure that you become a success, the thing is, it's not having that mentality. It's the disappointment along the way because at some stage you will get disappointed or you'll be let down and you think, oh, I'm not good enough, and you get discouraged. Do you have that mental strength to say, no, I'm gonna carry on that the path? Because at some stage, whether you, whether you like it or not, you're gonna get disappointed somewhere. And that's when you will be tested. Not when the good times is going. The good times are easy. You know, when things are going well, you know, anyone else, it's easy, isn't it? Everything comes naturally. Yeah. <laughs> There's a moment when that will go pear-shaped. And that's when the challenges are, and that's when the doubts start to kick in, I think. And I think that's where you find ones who um, make it, because they're people who are equally talented, but maybe not have the mental strength to say, well, you know, from that disappointment, can I really pick myself up? And I think that's the difference between, you know, it's such a fine line between success and failure. Uh, and th and that's, that's, that's the difference because I know for a fact there were people out there, certainly in my generation and before me, who were far more talented than I was. Um, they might say, oh, maybe I haven't got the, the luck that, you know, that yeah. I probably got being as a villa, you know, visit the country at that time. And there's all sorts, but there's all sorts of different challenges that we all face uh, and you have to make your luck at some point. Yeah. Um, and well, I saying that, that, there's two examples of that that come to mind. Uh, uh, Ian Wright, yeah. Jamie Vardy, yeah. neither of those guys were late young, starters, you know, they yeah. were late starters, so they must have had to deal with a lot of rejection Absolutely. along the way. Or, uh, or, or learn, I mean, to learn how to handle it. I did a whole segment on this a few weeks yeah. ago about managing disappointment. Yeah. And so when you take somebody like those two starting late in life, Gosh, you imagine, imagine when your career is going by you, what you must be thinking, when's my chance going to come? Yeah, yeah, it is. And it's, it's, you know, as I said, there is living proof out there time and time again, stories of the all different sporting uh, arena that you enter into. There's always a story. Some people, you know, have those. Uh, some people are fortunate. They grow up through parents and have that elite way of through and through their success. But basically normally the most sports people that I come across they come through the rough times and you know that's that separate the greats from the just ordinary mm -hmm. I suppose and uh, but I, I totally go back to your question if you really want it badly enough and you're prepared to sacrifice yourself to do it and put in the hard graft and the work and the disappointment and when things are going good then you enjoyed it and you capitalize at those moments I think there is just a fine lines but uh, yeah I, I'm, I'm as I say I'm living proof yeah. That, uh, that if you really want to succeed, no matter where you are or what part of the world you come from or how poor you are or how rich you are, you can uh, certainly turn that into success. How important is it to be humble? I think humble comes from within. Um, you learn as you go by. You know, you're not really um, brought into this world to learn these stuff. You, you no. sort of develop these things as you progress. You, when you become successful, you know, you got more attention. Um, the, the money that you earn is also another distraction. So it is very um, difficult if you're young and you're not used to that and all this fame and fortune come your way. Um, you need the, the right people around you uh, uh, to make sure that you've been guided the right way. And, and in that period of time, you, without doubt, you will make mistakes because we all have. Um, the fame and fortune is something totally new and different to, per, to people who haven't been in that position. You want it and you work hard enough to get it. But yeah. then when you get it, then it's a different story. As I said, you bring a lot of attention to yourself. The nice cars, the nice house, the, you know, the fancy restaurants, everything comes with you. But the attention comes with it as well. And the, the more successful you become, the more you're out there for people to want to be shooting at you. So you've got to be have your wits about you. Um, you will learn as an individual as you go along. You will know your friends, the people who wants to, to you know, who, who are your genuine friends and who are not. And often enough, you hear people have said those stories. There are people who just there for the ride. Um, uh, but you've got to figure those things. You've got to, you know, and that's growing up is all part and parcel of being successful um, and learning as you, as you progress. One last question. Mikel Silvestro said to me the toughest day he had in sport was the day football ended for him. 
the day that he didn't have football training, when he woke up in the morning and it was like, for him it was <laughs> like, it was, he says I was heartbroken. He said, because I had this empty space and I didn't know how to fill it on that very day. He said, no, I got over it. He said, yeah. but it was very hard. Can you remember when you retired? Yeah, I can remember. How like, it felt? If, if it, yeah, it, it felt great. <laughs> For me, it, it, it felt great because I had a great time. I had a, an amazing career uh, beyond my wildest dream, as a matter of fact. You know, coming from a little boy from the Caribbean, mm. family of nine living in a two bedroom bungalow, I had nowhere to turn to um, and turned that around. I turned it into something really positive. I had the opportunity to play, you know, uh, over 20 years as a professional. Um, meet some interesting people, lived beyond my dream, played against some great players, gone on to win all these wonderful trophies, travel the world. I, I think my life has been amazing, to be quite <laughs> honest. <laughs> you know, I just think it's hard not to think. And I, I just know that at some stage, I mean, it, it will come to an end because that's the nature of it. And I was kind of like prepared for it. And even to this day, I have walked away from the game. And if someone said to me, never to kick a football again. I will happily say, yeah, great. Wow. Uh, I, don't in, I don't miss it. I still love it. I love watching it. I indulge in it. Uh, I'm very thankful that I had the opportunity to play such a great sport. But I don't miss it. It's not my bread and butter like how it used to be. Yeah. I used to love and dedicate myself to that sport. You know, every day, week in, week out, day by day. Uh, and eat, sleep, breathe. Eat, sleep, that was and it breathe. Years? At, 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 for, for, for over 20 odd years. I played for 30 years plus, but for 20 years plus as a professional, I eat, live, live and breathe that stuff. And it's good to get away from it now. That's me. I've had a good innings. I've won things. I've done what I've wanted to do. And as I said, beyond my wildest dream. <laughs> I'm lucky. I'm blessed. I can tell you that. I don't miss the sport. And yes, it, it always. Uh, a bit emotional, of course, when it comes to that. And of course, there's nobody will say, oh, something that has been part of you for so long, every day of your life, you're walking away from that. That's just got to, that's emotional. That's something that's going to be like, yeah, missing from you. But I've been very lucky, I have to say. I don't, that's not hard for me at all. I've been <laughs> very lucky. Mikel, on the other hand, is probably different, <laughs> of course. But for me, no. I, I had an amazing time. And even to this day, to be here, you guys interview me, to me sharing my story goes to show. I had a, a, a terrific really career. Good time. Yeah. As a, a lifelong Man United fan, they say that you should never meet your heroes because you might be disappointed. Well, this is living proof that that is an utter load of rubbish. <laughs> do I? Thank you so, so much for your time. I appreciate, appreciate you it. taking it. Guys, you. whatever you do, take a leaf out of Dwight's book. Get out there, pursue your dreams, and do what I tell everyone to do. Get out and make it happen. Take care. I hope you enjoyed watching this video as much as I enjoyed making it. If you'd like to see more videos in the series, click here and you'll see some more. But if you click here and subscribe, you'll see everything that I do, all the videos, all the content, great value stuff, which I hope you enjoy. Making sure that you make it happen.